All right, take this stick for me. Okay. And just swish it through the air with your right hand only. Just kind of pick it up and just swish it. Like, not like you're playing golf swing, but you're just swishing. Make it go as fast as you can. Okay, so the swish that you're working on, is it, are you working on more of an into out path with that swish? Yeah. Okay, so do that again, but just don't worry about the path, just make it go faster. Yeah, All right, so your goal would be, you know, like if I said, I need you to go over here and clear out this brush with that stick, you would just whack, but you wouldn't, you would sword fight it, right? You wouldn't play golf swing. So show me back and forth, back and forth. So fast in both directions. That's better. Keep that going. All right, so watch me. So it's like I'm going swish, 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 both ways. And don't think of it as a golf swing. Just think of it as you're going to cut the grass down. Here you go. Good. So now as you're doing that, what's happening is your hand is rolling from open to closed. Right. You don't want that. And then you're not using the proper muscles. So I'll show you the proper muscles. So grip the stick just with your right hand only. Pull it back and stop. This muscle is the muscle you want to use. Okay. So shorten that muscle. Like that. See what your wrist just did? Yeah. Right? So instead of coming in here and then like rolling it over, come in here and fling it with your wrist that way. Okay. Yep. Good. Yep. Keep that going. Okay. Now pick it up here and fling it more down and through. That's it. Yep. Okay. Now go back and stop. Right? Now, see how you're holding it with your right thumb is right there? That's like you going, getting ready to throw a ball and you're like, I'm just gonna grip it off my thumb and I'm gonna fling it. Okay. You wouldn't do that. Right. You'd throw it off your finger. So here's a ball, put it in your right hand. That's how you're gonna hold it. Pull it back like you're gonna throw it. Where is it loading up? Right in the fingers. Yeah. Now throw it into the ground beside you. Right, do that again, pick up the ball and do it again. Okay. So raise it up real high and then throw it down. Good. Now take the club and actually get it more in the finger. Yeah, there you go. Raise it up. Now throw it and fling it down. Yep, like that. Yep, do it again. And just go all the way through. Yep, do it again. Yep. Yep. Let's feel the difference. Yeah. Right, so swing up and stop on this one on your back swing. Right now, right here, if I applied a little bit of pressure to the end of the stick here, it's going to load yeah. like this. You feel it loading in your thumb and finger. Now go ahead and push against me right there. All right, it's flinging off of that hand, flinging, 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 flinging through. So load it up on those two fingers and then whip it through. Yep, do it again. Yep, that's it. So you have to load it to be able to throw it. Yeah. So what you haven't been doing is you haven't been loading it properly and you've been trying to fix your swing by changing your path, but the path is relative to the throw. Right. So you haven't been throwing properly. So that's the reason why your path hasn't been good. So pick the club to, so take more of a golf stance now, turn big shoulder, turn, go all the way back and stop right now. When you throw that stick, throw it more toward me here as you whip it through. There. So you throw it a little bit behind you, which changes your path into out. So instead of guiding it into out, throw it back here so that it circles and goes out that way. So try it again. <clears throat> yeah, there you go. So it's more about the throw than guiding the pathway, right? So grab your driver. Do two-handed swings now. Yeah, load it up in that thumb and finger. So I want you to send that finger, yeah, like a trigger finger. Put it a little bit further down. Go to the top and stop. All right, now that's loaded a little bit better. Let's get it 
let's get it fully cocked back here. And now when you throw it, see the right uh, the tire? Yeah. Or the, it's the left tire, but it's the right side to us. You're going to throw it over here, and then the speed is going to circle through. Okay. So try that. Yep, there you go. Do it again. Big shoulder turn and kind of throw it back here a little bit. All right, now that changes your path. Now I'm going to show you how to add to the throw. Okay. So grab that stick again. So there's different segments of the arm that we can lever. All right, so pick the club up. <clears throat> go to the top of your swing and stop. All right. Now just go like this for me. Just wiggle your wrist. That's one, right? The That's this muscle. Yeah. Right? You can feel that. So if I put resistance here, go ahead and push against. Keep going. Push, 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 push. That's this muscle shortening, right? So this is flexing. That's extending. This extends the wrist back. So this muscle got short on the back. Yeah. Right? So this is an extensor muscle. This is a flexor. So in the golf swing. So when you flex down, boom, this muscle contracts this wrist and it goes wham. Yeah. Right? Now, you've got another lever, this angle. Yeah. So now push against my hand. Push hard, push hard, hard, hard. That's a tricep. Right? So that's the muscle that you're using to do that. So that's on the back side over here. Okay. So if I put resistance this way and you pull toward, that's your bicep. Yeah. Right? So if you did bicep curls, you're shortening the bicep muscle. If you do tricep extensions, you're extending the tricep. Okay, now there's a third one. It goes in through your lats in the back here. Yeah. So the next angle, so raise your shoulder up. Now, the next angle is right here in the shoulder. So okay. pull me down with your elbow. Keep going, right? Now keep going. Keep going, crunch me down with your ribs, right? So this whole system of ribs and lats and then triceps and then forearms so it's a whip and it all starts from your core goes up right so raise it up as high as you can put a little bend here good now start with crunching your abs so crunch drop your right shoulder tuck your elbow fling your forearm so that's the sequence so that's the whip of the power of that side okay. so try that for me so go up <clears throat> try to crunch back there and then whip it through that's it so try that quickly that's all right try again yep so we want it to accelerate in a whip like manner so it's a sequence so it starts with the ribs the lats the triceps extend the forearm flicks. Now for the most part, when you were just doing the forearm flick, you were kind of getting a lot of this. But what you weren't getting was the rib part. Yeah. Right? So if we just think of both ends of the, the whip, the ribs and the wrist. Okay. Everything else should kind of connect in the middle. So try that. So just kind of flick your wrist fast, but do it after you kind of crunch your ribs a little bit. There you go. Just keep working on that. Load up the wrist. There you go. So you can see how the rib crunch starts to accelerate. Yeah. Okay, keep that going. Get that trigger finger, kind of load up on the finger, not the thumb. There you go, that was faster, right? Good. So. The quickness of the hands produces club head speed. The crunching of the ribs changes pathway. So swing up and stop. Now here's what you were doing. You weren't doing any of this crunch stuff. Yeah. So what was happening is you would turn your shoulders over here. Yeah. Then you would come over the top and then all that was left was for your wrist to go yeah. and fling it. Right? So go back and stop. Now. Just crunch your ribs, don't fling it. There. Now what you're gonna see on the video is that club immediately dropped to the inside and now it's coming from inside out. Okay. Yep, so do it again. There you go. Do it again.
Yep, so you kind of crunch back. Yeah, there you go. Now let's do some fast ones again. So we're gonna speed the hands through there. Yep, stretch that right arm out. Really stretch it out behind you. There you go. Mm -hmm. And get that fling of the wrist. Yeah. Keep it going. <clears throat> I think you're starting to feel that sequence, right? Yeah. All right, now grab your driver. Okay. Now you're going to go two hands, but you're going to try to that, try all that same stuff. Okay. So we got the trigger finger, nice big backswing, and then try to get that sequence. There you go. Try it again. There you go. So now if we go back over here, hopefully this isn't overheated. This is your track man numbers from the last couple of swings. Let me put this in the shade. See if we can see that. So you had a hundred, yeah, it's hard to see. There you go, right? That was it, 100.7 on one, and then you had 99.5 on another. Okay. So your 100.7 is your club head speed number. And then you had a 1.45 smash, so you hit it reasonably solid. And your ball speed was 145.7. Okay, so it, it went 260 total, right? Mm -hmm. So this is why we're here, we're here to increase that speed. So do a couple more practice swings. Get that whip action. There you go. <clears throat> yeah, really stretch out the back swing. Because when you stretch out the back swing, you can really kind of smash the ribs through there, right? Yeah. <clears throat> you have to get some stretch, some extension, not just in your arms but through your whole core and then when you crunch everything through there it whips through okay. yep try again yep there you go try one more there you go all right now try with the ball Okay, good. Yep, let's try again. See if we can get the feel for it. So we changed the path already. So that produced a ball flight that actually went a little to the right. Yeah. Well, what you'll see in the video is when you started, you actually were aiming right, kind of coming over it. Path was more over the top than underneath. Mm -hmm. That was more down the line. So that's why it took off that direction. Okay. Don't worry about where it's going yet. Yeah. Just keep crunching it and throwing it. The most important piece of the puzzle is the fast hands, right? But the fast hands get to go on the proper um, pathway if you crunch. Okay. <clears throat> now that little maneuver you're doing with your hands, we don't want rolling hands. Right. We want this scooping hands, right? Which is that, that muscle fires through, yeah, fires that way. Yeah, so try again. Nice big backswing. Think fast hands, fast throw. Good, All right? So now because you crunched, now your pathway is a little more to the right and, the, and then you're throwing on top of it, which is great. Yeah. So try that again. Now we're gonna aim you a little bit more to the left. And then what I want you to do, because now that you're throwing in a better path, you're, you can actually have a little stronger grip to square the face. Okay. So I don't want you to have to roll your hands to square the face. I want your grip to square it right from the beginning. So turn both hands to the right. Underneath, no, other way. Yep, keep going. Yep, right there. Yep, so now that they're kind of underneath, I want you to be able to pull back and just chuck it like you've been working on there. Now you're 
kind of rolled the hands on that one instead of kind of doing that flick. Yep. It's alright. Try again. Yep. So get the hands under. <clears throat> the face is still, you're still trying to hit the face like square on the back of the ball. Don't try to roll it or anything. It's just starting from a stronger position so that when you do chuck it under, it's straight instead of chucking it under and it being open. It's a nice big backswing, do the crunch throw. That's closer, yeah. So now what we do is we make sure we crunch to make the pathway go into out. <clears throat> Once you've crunched and you've got the pathway going into out with a little bit stronger grip, you'll see that ball come out and have a nice little draw to it. Yeah, so what you'll see in the video too is because your grip is under, <clears throat> now this right arm's going to be under a little, the elbow's going to be lower, this arm's going to be a little higher. Yeah. And then what that does is when you crunch and throw, you're kind of already preset yeah. to do that better. So try that. There you go. Nice. <clears throat> That's a very, very straight ball flight, which means... The path and the face were pretty much going in the same direction. Yeah. Yep, so try that again. And just keep increasing your ability to do that quickly. Yep, so fast hands, kind of crunch and throw. you turned and through instead of crunching under yep yep try again so now you'll know oh okay well if the ball does that and hooks a little bit i must have turned instead of dropping that right shoulder back a little bit so the idea is is that go to the top of your swing and stop <clears throat> Okay, now if we exaggerate and all we did is crunch the right side, that means you're actually going, so don't, you know, don't turn your hips, just crunch your ribs there, right? Yeah. All right, don't turn your hips, just crunch your ribs. No, nope, you're bumping your hips. Crunch here. There you go. We'll do that again. All right, now there's no way the club can come over the top if you're going back this way. Okay. So take the club, put it across your shoulders, just kind of hold it across your shoulders. <clears throat> and then from right there, dip your right shoulder down without bumping your hip. Yep, there you go. So that's your thoracic spine, which is your upper spine, having the ability to have some movement to it. So go both ways. Yep, and then go the other way. Mm -hmm. All right, now keep that going. Now, if I put resistance on this end, you should feel like you're strong enough to just like go wham, okay. right? So you go boom. That's what you're going to use is that system of muscles. And that system of muscles doesn't only get the club started on the proper path. It adds speed because okay. it's building. So it's like boom with the shoulders, extension of the tricep, throw the hands like, like a whip. Okay. So try that. Don't do it with the ball yet. <clears throat> Get your grip, stronger grip. Go up and then stop on this one. And then just see if you can do that thoracic spine. Yeah, something like that. And then chuck it through. Yeah. So see if you can blend that and make it, make it all smooth. Yeah, there you go. So no more over the top. You do that, you can't go over the top. All right, so try again. There you go. <clears throat> so now where you're finishing, you've never finished like this before. Now as you're finishing, you're finishing kind of looking at the world sideways. You're going to see on video your posture stays here. So do your setup. Okay, so here's your posture with the stick. Go ahead and go all the way through. 
There you go. So now you're still in the exact same posture that you started. Okay. So that's really good for consistency. Yeah. So now what we're building is a more consistent swing with a more into out path with more speed. Yeah. So those are all good things, right? Okay. And one of the things we have to do for accuracy is we just got to change the grip a little bit because if you keep the same grip that you did before, you're going to leave everything out to the right. Right. Okay, so try to hit a couple. Stronger grip. Doing this like thoracic spine crunch and crunch and throw. Okay, face just got their clothes, but I think the path was pretty good. Just make sure you carry it all the way through. Don't stop at the ball. Just make sure you, after you've crunched and thrown that you go all the way to your finish. Uh-huh, that's all right. Just keep working on that. Have you ever done this before? Uh-uh. No? Okay. Yeah, I mean, anytime you learn something new, it's kind of tricky because you got a lot of thoughts kind of going through your head. But it should start feeling very athletic, you know, more powerful. Yeah. Yep, nice big turn and then do the crunch throw. Uh-huh, that's better. Okay, so you're starting to get a feel for it? Yeah. So let's just go faster and faster. Just put all of your force into it. Mm -hmm. So the tricky part about this is if you kind of slide your hips a little too much, it makes it harder for the upper body to drop in the right spot. So, <clears throat> you know, tone down the, the hips a little bit. See if you can get it more in the upper back. Mm -hmm. More upper body when, when you're working on this. And the grip might be a little too strong, so bring it back a little quarter turn. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Yep. Big, big coil, and then do the crunch throw with the upper body. Mm hmm So now you can feel the path is changing. Right now it's a lot easier for you to kind of feel like you're going into out. Yeah. Yep, do it again. practice swings so I'm gonna get in front of you here all right so if I was a tree <clears throat> and you go back and top into the top of your back swing and then you do that crunch backwards now your swing path you're like oh I can hit it to the right side of that tree no problem yeah. all right go ahead yeah there you go good Mm -hmm. Okay, try it with the ball. Yep. <clears throat> so as you throw, make sure you throw not just to the ball throw through the ball like your practice swings are great you're throwing it through just let the ball get in the way of this throw try again that's better there you go See so yeah, how it's just coming off with just more compressions. You know, it's not swiping across it. Yeah. Yeah, so you just gotta get comfortable with the hand placement of the grip and start working that sequence of getting the ribs and shoulders and throw.
Yep, much better. Because now what you're going to be able to feel like you can do is actually kind of aim straight or even a little left. Yeah. Bit because now you're like, oh, I can easily, I can drop it in the slot and send it out with a little draw. Uh -huh. So to, before you were kind of working too hard to make that happen. Just didn't keep it going out it kind of got the face to roll over mm -hmm. so as you throw remember it's that shortening of that forearm muscle it's not a rolling it's like a scooping feeling okay yeah that's the biggest difference is a lot of instruction that you might add before was okay stop slicing it in order to stop slicing it you're gonna have to roll your hands over was that yeah. what you were told yeah, yeah. So from a neutral grip, you know, yeah, sometimes you have to roll your hands to make that happen. From a stronger grip, it's actually more of like a scooping feeling of the forearm this way, okay. not twist. Okay. So do your grip. I'll show you what the your reason, the benefit of that is. Hold the club up in front, point it at my chest here. So there's the club face. Now hinge it back just with your wrist. See you rolled the face open. Yeah. Don't roll it open, just hinge it straight backwards. There's the face. Now yeah. scoop it through. There's the face, right? It stays square the whole time. Yeah. Whereas the other way was a lot of rolling. So you can imagine right here at 100 miles an hour, if you rolled it open and you rolled it closed, there's only one moment in time where it's going to be straight. Right. Whereas if you hinge it back this way, it's already straight. Yeah. You come through, it's straight and you exit over here, it's straight. So it's straight basically the entire time. Okay. So when we look at what you're doing, there's always three things in golf. There's consistency, there's accuracy, and there's distance. Yeah. So the consistency part is kind of what you do with your body, right? Yeah. If you're not crunching your shoulders, if you're not kind of coming through, you're not holding proper posture as you go through impact. Yeah. So you're gonna hit tops, chunks, it's gonna be difficult for you to be consistent. Yeah. So the work that we did up there, that's going to help the consistency part. Mm -hmm. This thing, this is the accuracy part. And then the distance part, you automatically pick up distance by doing this, by hitting it straighter. Right. And then by being more consistent, yeah. you, you pick up distance. But once you get all of these muscle groups firing in the right order, that's when you add speed. But the speed isn't still reliant on a one millisecond of club face. Yeah. It's square the whole time. So as you swing, do some practice swings. As you load up, just be aware that that face is staying square all the way back and thrown square all the way through. Okay. Right, so instead of a rollover after impact, do it in slow-mo. Right, go super slow, come through here, super slow there. Right now, keep this going, which leaves the face there. Whereas the rollover puts the face like that. Okay. Right. So scoop a couple. I call it a scoop because really, oh, to me, this is what it feels like: is I'm scooping it through instead of rolling it over. Okay. Yeah. So it's gonna feel like you kind of scoop it with the right arm. Yeah. So try that again. So now you can feel that forearm. Going like that. Yeah. Yep, do it. Okay, so try it faster. There you go. Now you can try it with the ball. So we drop the shoulder, we do this crunch, this thoracic spine crunch back here to, to get the path going in the right direction with power attached to it. Okay. So you have hand speed. Yeah. That's That produces a lot of club head speed but it doesn't have substance behind it. Whereas when you crunch and you kind of smack it with your full weight of your 10 pound arm, mm -hmm. your speed has substance stacked on top of it. Okay. So as you thrust and you rotate, you drop that shoulder and then come through and then scoop it through, that's the whip, right? Okay. So let's see that. So big, big backswing and then give me a crunch and a scoop. A hard crunch, hard scoop. Good. 
when its ball took off pretty straight, had a little too much draw. Yeah. So what we do is we ask ourselves, did I scoop enough? So did you scoop enough? Uh, you think you rolled it a little? Yeah, so try again and just scoop better. Okay. Because what that also is going to do is not only make it go straighter, it's going to give you a little more height. Okay. <clears throat> so it's crunch and then scoop it longer, right? Don't let the scoop end. Like scoop, scoop, scoop all the way through. Okay. Like you're trying to scoop it up in the air. Yeah, try again. You're getting really close. Do the stick again. Okay. Just the one hand stick. <clears throat> right hand only. Kind of grip it a little lighter in the fingers. Yep. Turn way back up and behind. Yep. Scoop it hard under. Yep. Got to grip it more in your fingertips so that you can fling the wrist. Your, your wrists aren't flinging fast. Because, nope, you're gripping it in the palm. Put it, relax your grip. Put it out here in the fingertips. Just keep it really light. Mm-hmm. Then whip it. Yep. Scoop whip it. Mm-hmm. Good. Now stretch it out and give me a crunch scoop. Mm-hmm. Right? So the crunch scoop is going to happen here. So go back and stop in your backswing. Right? So if I hold this stick up here, the first part of that is you crunch. Boom. Then the second part of it is you scoop. Wham. And that's what takes you all the way through. Okay. Yep, so keep that going. Mm-hmm, that's it. Mm-hmm. Yep, and just make it go as fast as you can. That's it. All right, it's different. You've never done this before, so that's okay. Just grab your driver again. Okay. Yeah, take a grip, which is slightly stronger than what you've been used to. Yeah, but you still have to have the ability to scoop. So do a practice swing. Yeah, big back swing, kind of crunch, scoop it through there. There you go, good. Yep. Now try to scoop it up in the air as high as you can. There you go, good. So try it with the ball now. Good. Right, so the ball started a little right. So that means you're getting the crunch and everything. The path is now going that way. It started a little right and it did try to draw back slightly. So try, and try again. Okay. What do you think? Does it feel doable? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it feels like <clears throat> I don't have to work as far as to try to yeah. swing it out to the right. Yeah, I mean, that was part of the reason why you were losing speed is because you had to, like, you were guiding this pathway and directionally, like, slowing it down in order to kind of direct it and guide it through there. And then your collision at impact was based on just that one millisecond. Did you time the hands? Right. When you don't have to worry about timing the hands as much, it frees you up to just be more aggressive. Yeah. And then if you know the crunch takes care of the path then it's all happening quickly and in sequence. It's not happening by you kind of guiding it, manipulating it, like manhandling the club, like shoving it through there. You throw it through there. Right. All right, so yeah, try a couple more practice swings there. Big, big back swing. There you go. Big turn, just be fast. Yeah, that's all okay. Try again. That was good. That was probably one of the first ones that you didn't try to roll the hands. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's good. You just got to throw it. Like, make sure you throw it 
through there still. You're throwing the face through square is what you're doing. There you go, really good. So that's a little bit more of that power draw. Because the draw shapes that you got earlier were more pulls. Right. Because you were kind of coming over it and the face was square, but it turned into a hook. Yeah. That was good. Try that again. So that was, now you're up to 267. Okay. Yeah, big wind up, big back swing. Yeah, that's okay. I was just coming off a little low. So let's take a look at the actual driver itself. So now that's your mechanics. Let's see what we got going on here. So we got a nine degree turned up. And then what are we using? A 65. Okay. So I'm going to put a different driver together for you okay. so you can try it. Just, just keep working on that part. Let's see. You like ping? Yeah, okay. So, I'm going to go with this ping head instead. Spin numbers are generally low, so I'm going to increase your spin a little bit. <clears throat> in this 55 stiff so we're going to lighten it just a little bit um, and then we're going to add <clears throat> the 10 and a half but we're actually going to put it up to 12 degrees okay. right so let's keep hitting get my wrench Technically, that was probably your best swing today, right there. Yeah, yeah, sequentially it's better. So you hit that one at 279. Right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to increase your launches and everything. So here, I'll hand you this and the wrench. Just click it in there, tighten it in there. Because that speed was... 98 your spin was only 2300 uh, your smash factor was good at 1.46 so you hit that one it's one of your longest drives at two well it may be your longest let's see 270 yeah basically 278 off of a 98 right so we got your longest drive off of a club head speed that wasn't your fastest right and your spin rate number was a little low for park city which means it's just going to kind of fall out of the air a little bit so that's why i've got you at 12 degrees okay. so go ahead and make a make a nice full swing at this one yeah that's okay So you ask yourself, did you accidentally roll it a little bit? Not scoop it enough? You think so? Yeah, I'll try that. Yeah, there you go. Really kind of fling it down more, fling it down and under. All right, a little thin. It's all right, try again. I mean, also have you do is just put the ball a little bit more forward in your stance just for your timing your tendency is to not fling it soon enough yeah. so if we put the ball up a little bit it'll it'll help you fling it um, scoop it before you get to impact 
because that's what I want you to feel right here is that you're getting there and it feels like this. Yeah. Like I want, I want that feeling. So hold that position. Like that's what I want you to feel before impact. Okay. You've really flung it and scooped underneath it. Okay. Well before you get to the ball. Try practice swing. See if you can just scoop it sooner than what you've been doing. Good. Yep, nice big back swing. You're gonna crunch and scoop early. Yeah, there it is. Now try that with the ball. Mm-hmm, that's okay. We got that up in the air, that's good. Yep, 272 on that one. But that was one of your longer carries, so that was a 237 carry. Yep, crunch in an early scoop. Yeah, there we go. That's the trajectory we want. Yep, yeah, 245 carry, 280 total. And that was only from a 97. Yeah. So we haven't hit your potential yet on speed, but we're getting the pattern, we're getting the consistent high draw, that's what we're looking for. Yep, yeah. yeah, so I'll just crunch and scoop it up in the air. Mm-hmm. So what you got to watch is that you're not trying to get it in the air with your body. You're not like, here, hold this. Come back here and film this. Okay. It's still rolling. Right. You don't want to try to get it in the air by like doing this. Right. You want to get it in the air by doing this. Okay. So you stay, kind of keep your body stacked up on your feet. So when you crunch this shoulder down, you scoop your hands under here you're not trying to lift it up with your feet okay you're coming down and then like scooping up in the air okay so you crunch here and then scoop it up okay so the wrists is what's going to get it up in the air not your body yeah that's better Yeah, really good there. So I'll try that with the ball. We want the hand speed and the scoop to make that happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think you got the scoop, but you didn't get the crunch down first. Yeah. <laughs> that's all right, try again. Just miss timing. Yeah. Could be ball positions, so that's why I come over here and look. Do a practice swing. Okay. okay, try that. Yeah, try to get that hit the tee out from underneath the ball. So really scoop it down and down and underneath the ball. That's better. So you can see the spin there keeps the ball in the air longer. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's where, you know, when you came up here to this elevation, we we adjusted your driver right away, right? We went from nine to uh, ten and a half, but it's still really not enough. 
right? So here's the last thing I want you to do. Take that wrench and unscrew that weight that's in the back. Yeah. Yeah, just take it all the way out. It's typically about a 22 gram weight. So we're just gonna take it out. Because as you're working on this, you're gonna want your hand speed to increase. Yeah. And when it's a lighter club head, there you go, I'll take it. Feel how heavy it is. It's heavy, right? This, yeah. Yep. Tungsten weight, it's, uh, what does it say on there? Stamped with a 23. So, I mean, that's significant, right? Yeah. So now when you do that, I'll take the wrench. Okay. Now do a couple practice swings. Now you're gonna feel like, oh, okay, this is much lighter. I can, I can kind of scoop my hands through a lot easier. It's easier, right? Yeah. yeah. A lot of times the reason why I do this is, yes, lighter will make you go faster, but the heaviness is causing a burden. And what you're trying to do to make up for the heaviness and the burden is you're trying to use your body to lift it in the air. Whereas you can now with a much lighter club, you can just kind of flick it in the air. Yeah. I'd rather have you flick it in the air with your hands than try to like uh, lift it in the air with your whole body. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so give that a shot. Yeah, so a nice big backswing. It's kind of crunch and scoop it up in the air. There you go, really good. Yep, so immediately your club head speed then went to 101. Okay. Just easier. Right, so now that's your path you didn't crunch, right? So you kind of did a little bit of your old swing where you turned instead of crunching. Yeah. And then on top of it, your hands decided maybe they wanted to roll a little bit more instead of scoop. So try again. It's very normal to kind of revert back because your brain just kind of goes back to your default of this is what I've always felt like. Right. And since we strengthen the grip, that's not going to be good, <laughs> right? If you start doing the turn and roll over it, you're going to have these low snap hooks. Yeah. But that's your first indication that you're actually reverting backwards. So you want to drop the shoulder, crunch underneath it, hit it higher in the air. And then instead of hitting a low ball that curves to the left, now you hit a high ball that gently curves to the left. And it's all because you crunch and come under it instead of coming around on it. So the second you get a low one, think, oh, I didn't crunch enough and I have to scoop this thing up in the air and hit it really high. So try to crunch and hit it up in the air. So you got the crunch better, right? Ball flight started straighter. 101 on the speed, so that's the lighter club is helping to increase that. So you're going from 97, 98 up to 101 pretty quickly without working as hard. Yeah. But we're mostly focused on the form. Because as you get stronger, and you will as you get older, you're just going to be able to create more speed. The benefit of doing it this way is that now you're creating speed that's locked into accuracy. It's locked into a better path and a better release pattern. Yeah. Because the last thing you want is to have super fast hands as you get stronger, but still be rolling. Yeah. There's plenty of really fast club head speed swingers that have no idea where the ball's going because they can't figure out that one millisecond at impact. Right. So if you can get this more of this square club face release with this, what I call a scoop release instead yeah. of a roll, if you can scoop it better and then you start working your shoulder better, you'll have the path and the face start matching up. Mm -hmm. So let's hit a couple more. And then I want to finish with you hitting like some nine irons because I want you to see what it does to your iron swing as well. Yeah. Yeah, so get a, don't go as fast as you can, but just kind of crunch and scoop under. Yeah, at least that's a more acceptable miss. Yeah. Right, little thin. Yeah, 
There you go. Really work the crunch so that the path changes. There you go. And then scoop it through. Don't roll it. And it kind of slid and turned on it, right? So you got to crunch it back. Yep, try one more. Then we'll do the irons. best there yeah 100 on the club speed and 263 right so your best was like a 280 I think it was that one 280 with a 245 carry this one over here is a 245 carry that went 271 mm -hmm. this one went to 280 because it was more of a draw shape than this one was straight yeah and you got that one there that went to 280 off of a 97 club speed. But we're getting your spin rates now in the 3000s, which in Park City, that's what we want. Like 3200 is really good. Yeah. Um, when you go back to sea level, that's where you can afford to have a little less spin. Yeah. But you, you don't spin it very much anyway. So you don't want to be pursuing 1800s. 2200s you don't ever want to see those numbers you want to see like in the 3000s okay. maybe 2800 so um let's go to that nine iron we'll just finish up with a few nine irons because again you know this this all of this stuff is going to change your path it's going to make your iron game more accurate um you're going to hit it higher um, you're going to spin it probably a little bit more, and that's going to be good. This is going to keep the ball in the air, especially on your iron game. You'll pick up another 10 yards of carry, and then when it lands on the green, it'll bite instead of coming in kind of flat. So try try a couple practice swings, slightly stronger grip like we've been working on. And then don't hit these as hard as you can. Just kind of smooth them out there, but try to get the sequence of the crunch scoop. Yeah, go back and stop. Okay, now start crunching there. Immediately, that club path is now coming from the inside. The club's over here, right? And that all stems from that thoracic spine, the upper back, starting it in that direction. And then from there, it comes through. All right, so if you think of somebody bowling, so pick up a ball in your right hand and come back here. You ever go bowling? All right, so you got the bowling alley, so come in with your bowling ball and then show me kind of the bowling action, right? So come there, there, right? Now, if you do that again, right? So bring your arm back here. Now, if you drop this down this way, you're probably gonna bowl it straight into that gutter, right? right? Well, for golf, that's, that's that in to out path. Okay. A lot of people too, when they go to bowl, they kind of come up here, they turn their shoulders and they bowl it into the left gutter. Right. So the, the way to do that, get your upper back to drop back. Okay. So I'll try a couple nine irons here and let's see. It's all making sense, right? Yeah. Yeah, much better. Slightly stronger grip, nice big backswing, nice big turn, kind of give it a little bit of a crunch, and then make sure you scoop it, don't roll it. Now you turned on that one. You feel the difference? Yeah. Yeah. So where you have to spend the work is trying to do this with the upper back. Yeah. Don't try to do it with your... Like, you, you shouldn't be dropping the shoulders back by sliding the hips forward. It should be happening just kind of more independently. So do a practice swing, but as you do this, don't let your right foot come off the ground. Okay. So go back slow, and then as you crunch scoop, don't let your right foot come up. 
and go all the way through, keep going, keep going, leave it down. Yeah. So what that's going to do is that's going to res, uh, res, help to reduce the amount of slide. Okay. Because when you sit back and you keep that right foot down, it you know, makes your hips have to kind of pivot instead of shift. Okay. So try a full practice swing. So crunch, scoop, and keep your right foot down. It's kind of hard. Yeah. Yeah. Try it with the ball. Okay. Yep. So try crunch, scoop, and then just leave leave your balance kind of 50-50 on your feet. Okay. <laughs> there you go. It's hard to do, but it'll help you to work the upper back down yeah. instead of just kind of sliding the hips to do that. Okay. Yep. Try again. Now, after you're done, like when the club's all the way through, then you can come up onto your toe and finish kind of like you normally do. Okay, so on that one there, your shoulders begin to do the turn instead of crunch back over here. Yep, there you go. Mm-hmm. So don't hit this one hard. Just see if you can make that pattern. Because what it's going to feel like to you is you're going to hit it way right. Yeah. But with the grip the way it is, it's not going to go way right. Path of the shoulders makes it feel like you're going to block it way right at target. Except the club face is going to be square. So that's actually going to produce a little draw. So what you have to do now is embrace this idea that it's okay for you to finish out to the right. Okay. Because now with that grip, you can see it's not going to fade, is it? <laughs> so, yep, so nice, smooth, kind of big turn, crunch it under, scoop it, and feel like you're scooping it to the right side of the green. So pick a target out here. Okay. What are we aiming for? Uh, purple. Okay, so aim at the purple. Right now, see the tree way out to the right? Yeah. That's where I want you to swing to. Okay. So when you crunch and scoop it, feel like you're hitting it out there. There you go, that's more solid. All right, try again. How far does that club usually go? So that one, that one went 160 on that one. Yep. So now look out at that tree, look at the clubhouse, chimney on the clubhouse, bunkers way out to the right, and then crunch and scoop it out there. Don't go to the target, swing out to the right. Okay. Let's mistimed it. All right, let's make this the last one. So focus. Pretend you're on the course, go through your whole routine. Okay. And the best advice I have for you is when you come out to grind and groove this, stick with one club for maybe 20 balls, Yeah. switch to another club for 20 balls, switch to another club for 20 balls, right? Go through th like three sets of 20, yeah. maybe like nine iron, seven iron driver, something like that. Okay. And then once you've gone through your first 60 balls, then hit another 60 balls, picking a new target and a new club. So every single time, pick a different club, different target, um, pretend you're on the course, you know, visualize a, a maybe a tournament that's coming up, something that you're thinking about where you need to hit a certain shot, visualize it, go through the whole routine. So we're gonna just do one of those for the video. So go through the whole routine. Show me, tell me what target you wanna go for. Purple again. So come in, go through your whole routine. Okay, now in your mind, what are you thinking here? So I'm going to try to swing out to the right. How are you going to do that? 
crunching and then scooping out, right? So show me that in slow-mo. There, crunching, scoop, nope, you rolled it. Yep, so do that again. There, now go slow. Now come through. Now look at that face. Yeah. That's a scoop. That's a scoop. That's a roll. Yeah. Okay. So you've kind of got yourself caught between rolling and scooping, which is normal. Mm -hmm. you, you've never done this before. So this is going to be the main thing. Yeah. And, there, and what's going to be the evidence is if you look up, yeah, there you go. If you look up and you're hooking it, yeah. uh, probably a high chance that you rolled it and you didn't scoop it through there. Yeah, so do one more like normal practice swing as if you're on the course. You're trying to feel this out. Yep, you got your grip. You're going to crunch and you're going to scoop it up in the air. Good, very good. That's much better. I can tell by your follow through that you didn't roll. Yeah. Okay, so try to replicate that feeling. <laughs> Topped it. Here, try one more. <laughs> it was just quick. When we hit a bunch of drivers hard, then you go back to a nine iron. It's a little tricky with the timing. So kind of make sure you smooth this one out there. Yeah, there you go. Give me a little crunch and kind of that high scoop finish. Yep. Try one more. Bring that ball position back just a little bit because I think it's kind of up closer to where you had your driver. Do a practice swing. Hit the ground on the practice swing. Take a little divot. Yeah, make sure when you're doing this, one little side note is as you throw down to do the scoop, you have to throw it down first. Don't start scooping way too early on an iron. On a driver, you can have an early scoop. On an iron, you kind of have to hit down first and then scoop after. So take a divot on this practice swing. Kind of crunch, hit down, and then scoop under. Yeah, there you go. No divot, but that was a better move. Okay, try it. There you go, really good swing there. Nice. Yep. Let's see. Yep, 160 again. So, <clears throat> obviously, the main goal was let's figure out how to not come over the top. Right. Let's also figure out how to create speed. Well, when you're kind of turning and then it's tricky, right? You turn, but now you have to guide it into out. You didn't know that you could throw the club back over here, which caused it to go into out. Right. So not only did we stop the over the top move, we created more speed by a throwing motion back here, like we we're talking about throwing it back to the cart. Yeah. But the way we did that in sequence was we kind of crunched it first and then we threw it to get underneath. So as you're working on it, it's going to take a minute to kind of get the feel for that. Yeah. So don't do it at full speed yet. <clears throat> it's going to feel really powerful and you're going to want to go faster. But you want to get that sequence built first. And then it will feel effortless. You know, like you you found there, you hit your, you know, 280 yard drive from a 97 club speed. Yeah. And that wasn't even as fast as the 101 that you ended up getting to. You have any questions or thoughts you want to add to the video? Right, trying to time it and that's where these little mini contortions that you were making before were all one number one guiding two timing related yeah. or this is no guide and way a simpler method of timing that face yeah, yeah cool
All right, so I'm going to post this on YouTube so that the whole world can see <laughs> your improvement there. It was good. And as you make the as you make these swings, um, don't forget that one little bit at the end where it's if you start crunching a lot and scooping a lot, the tendency is to go from what you have there, which is a bunch of divots, to no divots, and you start picking it clean. Yeah. So especially as you get into your wedges and nines and eights, you still want to be kind of hitting down, compressing it. Okay. So if you overdo this, what will typically happen is you'll start kind of hitting it thin, picking it clean. Yeah. Um, the good news is, is that it's going to go straight and kind of high. Yeah. Bad news is you're going to lose some of that compression off the face. Okay. So we want to get some of that. We want to retain that. If you're not doing it at all, we already know you're going to get those low hooks. So then the crunch scoop, more of doing more of what we're working on kind of fixes that. So, all right, good work. Thank you.